Hello everyone, good evening. Good evening. I am so delighted to welcome you all for today's webinar on Creativity in English Language Teaching organized by Yela English Language Teachers Association of India through our chapter. Thank you so much for taking your time out and being here today. We are happy to inform you that the LY Tour chapter, which is exclusively dedicated to a government school teachers professional development, is celebrating its first anniversary. On that note, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to Elango, the National Secretary of LY, for sparing his time to be with us on this of previous occasion. I am also happy in welcoming our today's speaker, Dr. Albert Pilayan. Dr. Vincent, our speaker for the day before yesterday's webinar, so that the members of the rest of LTI Tumaru and all the participants. And now let me introduce uh, a speaker. Dr. Albert T. Ryan is an academic English language teaching professional, teacher trainer, media critic and education columnist. He had his education at Singles College Kuchi and at the Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, Hyderabad. He has also done certain courses in Tissol methodology at University of Maryland and critical thinking in language learning and teaching at the University of Oregon. He has over two decades of teaching experience at the tertiary level, both in India and abroad. He was the editor of the British Council's English Language Teaching Contact Scheme, India and Sri Lanka for six years. Dr. Ryan contributes a weekly call of English Blues to edX, a higher education supplement, the New Indian Express. As a columnist since 2006, he has contributed over 750 articles on the nuances of the English language and English language teaching in India. The New Indian Express has published a compilation of Dr. Ryan's weekly uh, columns as books. He also, contributed, he also contributes lead article on education and the column Why Angle to the Hindu Education Plus. He edited the, Yelta, the journal of ELP published by the English Language Teachers Association of India for two years till March 2019 and has interviewed fully well-known ELP experts including Stephen Pressure, David Moore, Scott Thornbury, Alan Mallet, Nick Piche, Nick Vicky Hockley, Richard Smith, Jane Wills, Jay C. Jack C. Richards and Ernest Prabhu from here. As an ELP resource person, he has conducted numerous ELP workshops and has trained over 1,000 teachers in India. As a resource, he conducts workshops on critical thinking, critical pedagogy, creative writing, PBI education, social media in education, etc. So, Elthai Kuduvaru is very happy to welcome the uh, speaker of today's webinar, Dr. Algibayan, on creativity in English language teaching. Uh, before uh, I hand over the floor to the speaker, uh, we have a, a couple of uh, round uh, housekeeping rules. So kindly mute your audio and turn off your video during the webinar. Do not click the share screen button. Uh, you could always uh, uh, put your queries and clarifications at the chat box. Chat box. The format of uh, today's webinar will be 45 minutes presentation and 15 minutes for question and answer session. Uh, certificate participation will not be provided. Thank you so much. And now may I hand over the floor to Dr. Uh, Alberti Rai. Thank you, Mr. Susai. Uh, good afternoon, participants. I'm very happy today just because uh, Dr. Ilangu, uh, the General Secretary of LTI, English Language Teachers Association of India, is here, and Professor Vincent Soundram is also there. On 12th, we had a webinar by Professor Vincent Soundram. It was uh, really fantastic. Uh, the difference between other webinars and these webinars are this, like uh, though on 12th we had our first webinar, uh, it actually started on the 9th like when uh, Mr. Susay created the WhatsApp group 
and the discussions among the participants started on the 9th, 10th and 11th week had wonderful discussion. Uh, Mr. Vincent Saundram posed many brainstorming questions and the teacher participants responded and then uh, it was a really good discussion. And that was one of the reasons why the webinar was very successful. And we have today the second webinar and I started posting the questions on 12th evening as soon as the other webinar got over. Uh, first I just posted 12 questions on creativity, the first six on general uh, creativity in general and the second six questions on creativity and ELT. Overwhelming response. Some of them responded to me directly, stating like what they mean by creativity, whether they are really creating, whether creativity is important, ELT. And I also posted very uh, an interesting anecdote by, like on uh, Sylvester Stavlin. How that particular text can be exploited and used in the classroom. Uh, many teachers, like you know, they just came up with some interesting ideas. So, this webinar, like you know, is different from other webinars because we have been like you know discussing just like a flipped classroom. What the students do, like you know, they prepare uh, in at home, and then when they come to the classroom, they discuss the ideas, and everybody contributes to that. That is crowdsourcing the knowledge. It's not just one resource person. Everybody is a resource person. That's what I can say today. And uh, the topic today, like, you know, creativity in ELP, English language teaching. Uh, so the term creativity should be understood well. Uh, there are numerous definitions of creativity. That's why when I asked, what is the, what is your concept of creativity? How do you, just uh, someone else, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes. Fine. Yeah. One minute. Let me just open the. Door. See the PPT? Yes, sir. Okay, it's fine. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, just uh, this creativity in ELT. Let's uh, before we start the session, just have a look at this one. Uh, this is a cartoon, very interesting. I uh, usually say like a food for thought. It's food for laughter. <laughs> like you know, everywhere we have online classes going on, but some like you know just. Uh, Uh, the full lady is, is unable to understand online classes. Let's await online tuitions. Already online tuitions have started. Like, you know, the, what the teacher says is not clear. And they have just employed uh, some teachers for online tuition. And this is a wonderful cartoon. Uh, the cartoon is, is really creative. The cartoon is really creative. And if this is not creativity, what is creativity? Okay, so. And uh, when we started the session, there were around uh, 35 participants. It is always said like creative people are always late, not punctual. And those who came late must be more creative than uh, those who were present uh, those who came in time. Uh, next, uh, let's just, just this is my outline of the presentation today. Just brainstorming. Then we will just come uh, uh, define creativity. What is creativity? And each one has a different uh, term, but one common definition is required. And why is creativity important for teachers? That's a very important question. Like uh, there are so many fields, like you know, where creative people are employed. For example, film director, uh, like uh, script writers. Okay, 
So then next creativity in English language teaching, how we teachers can be creative. The fifth one is assessing our own creativity. I have already sent you a tool which I designed in 2014 and some of you have already assessed your own creativity and then send me uh, your score. That's great. Then last word. Next. Uh, just look at these six questions. What is your concept of creativity? What is your definition or concept of definition? So many participants have given a different. Okay, okay. And one called definition like, you know, many have written is uh, uh, thinking differently. Thinking differently, doing things differently. And what we do should be meaningful. This is what another person has written. Thinking differently, doing things differently, being unique and the fourth one like you know what we do should be meaningful and should be useful to the society and to, uh, to anyone okay uh, the second question what are the characteristics of a creative person uh, this can be like you know just we come across so many creative people some of our teachers are very creative and some film directors are creative you watch uh, uh, movies by Atle and he just like you know is a uh, lot of uh, like you know original ideas are from someone but he adapts uh, this is how he is and some story writers you know some writers we like some writers uh, we are all from we all come from literature background we must have read so many books on literature and we like their ideas and just like the characteristics of creative person when we say uh, you just take some 50 creative people what are the characteristics what are their characteristics then we take compile them and then say these are the characteristics of creative people and you have given like you know just uh, if you in the whatsapp group if you uh, look at it so many things you have given like creative people or like you know just uh, 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 they have innovative ideas they take risks and so many like you know we will discuss that later is the third question is a very important one is creativity genetic or learned like it's a nature or nurture and 60% of the participants uh, answered the question saying that it is genetic if it is genetic there is no need to have discussion on creativity DLT at all only okay people are born with creativity and they are going to be creative and others are not creative that is the conclusion that we need to arrive but it is not true creativity yeah some people are born with creativity, that's true. Many research studies have proved that. And creativity also can be learned and developed. It is both nature and nurture. Some of us haven't realized, realized our own creative potential. Once we realize our creative potential, then we become more creative, more creative and more productive. Okay, the fourth question, do you think you are a creative person? Why? And almost everybody, I'm very glad, like, you know, almost everybody who has responded says they are creative. And reasons they gave, and that are like, you know, just uh, uh, in the classroom, they make students understand concepts, they make things easier, they are able to adapt, like, you know, just uh, uh, if they take an exercise, they just change it. Uh, they give so many uh, reasons for that and uh, that's a good one like you know everybody thinks they are creative and uh, can you name some jobs that require creativity again they have given a long list of jobs uh, including movie making writing uh, then someone has said like you know painters are very creative okay fine uh, Almost every job I've seen it like, you know, it requires creativity. Even if you do something, ordinary things like for cleaning the floor or cleaning the toilets. You need to a person has to be creative. I've seen some are very creative. So almost every job requires creativity. Uh, do you think teaching is a creative job? And uh, except two persons all have said that teaching is a creative job and uh, how many teachers are creative if I ask that question how many of your teachers were creative how many of you think like you know your colleagues are creative then 
uh, if we ask our students whether they, they think that we are creative, then it is a tough part. Like, you know, just uh, uh, we may be embarrassed and uh, it could be just uh, we think that we are creative but we haven't uh, used our creative potential for the benefit of the students. These things or six things are very in general and I am coming to the next six here. Do you think uh, you should use the textbook creatively? Can you, anyone just uh, answer the question like, you know, just, uh, I mean, uh, talking about, uh, like, you know, is it important to use book creatively? Can anyone just respond to the question? Because a textbook gives everything to you. It has pre-reading activities, some, like warm-up activities, the reading, reading comprehension, then post-reading, interesting activities. Is it required? Is it important for a teacher to be to use the create uh, textbook creatively? Can anyone? Yeah, you could unmute yourself and then answer. Yeah. Okay. Who is that with us? Uh, unable to hear the person. It's okay. It's okay, fine. Yes. Yeah, just, oh yeah. Yes, definitely, sir. The textbook should be presented to the students in a creative way. Look, the textbook itself is creative. Is it required for teachers to use it more creatively? Yeah, because um, uh, we should present the textbook uh, to the learners uh, somewhat in an attractive way. Uh, just opening a textbook and reading something cannot uh, uh, be useful for them to learn the things. May I know your name, please? Flozia. Yes, Flozia. Just you have been very interactive. Okay, you have given your answers. Okay, Thank you. Yeah. Can you modify a language game as per your students' needs? This is another thing. Like in many workshops, like you know, just. Uh, 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 some teachers are very creative. They modify the games. Like you know, sometimes they say this particular game cannot be used for our students. But I uh, just like you know, we have done, like demonstrated it and uh, asked the teachers to demonstrate. They have come out very creatively. Like you know, just a creative teacher, anything will be uh, useful. One day, if you like you know, just uh, if a teacher goes to the classroom and he or she doesn't have a textbook. Uh, none of the students uh, has brought the textbook and the teacher has to teach something only then the teacher realizes that she is she can do something like if you the teacher is really creative and the class is going to be fun like you know just the students are going to learn something new and uh, almost everybody is going to be productive uh, next one question number nine can you modify a language activity or exercise as to your yes, students and this also like you know many teachers have responded positive like I said yes uh, that's a good sign yes, how do you teach grammar creatively when it comes to question number 10 11 and 11 uh, some teachers say like you know we haven't learned to teach grammar creatively because the examination system doesn't allow us to be creative that's what teachers written and how do you teach vocabulary creatively? We have never been taught to teach vocabulary creatively. And uh, they suggest some methods, but they are traditional. Like, you know, these are the two things are just uh, based on your responses. I'm going to focus on that. And the last one, what strategies do you follow to develop your creativity? That's a very important, like, you know, what strategies? Like, Everybody has to be creative because you all said teaching is a creative profession. Uh, like many other professions, teaching is a creative profession. Students like creative teachers. We want the students to be creative. And if, if it, it can happen only if the teacher is creative. And how we can develop our creativity? That's the first question that we will discuss uh, in detail later. Now, just uh, look at this, uh, this uh, uh, definitely like you know, the quote by George Bernard Shaw. Some men see things as they are and say why. I dream of things that never were and say why not. These are two different things. Like some men see things as they are. 
we see there are so many classroom uh, problems in the classroom. We are not able to manage the class well. Students are not able to learn English properly. Even if we teach, learning doesn't take place. These are problems. We think things as they are, and we ask the questions why. It's very important. We just need to be analytical and critical, like you know, critical and reflective. And the second part, I dream of things that never were, were and say why not. Okay, uh, just uh, take a minute. What does the quote mean to you, as a teacher? How do you interpret it? Just uh, take uh, thirty seconds and reflect on the second part. Of the quote by George Bernard Shaw, I dream of things that never were, and say why not. Okay. People who see things as they are and asking why, like you know, if it, uh, I just explain to you the classroom management problems, learning issues, and teaching issues, they ask uh, and try to find answers. Okay, that's very important. That's also important. But the second part, dreaming of things that never were and asking why not, never, you know, it never existed. But if you are a dreamer, that's why imagination plays an important role in. Uh, Uh, important role. Uh, why did I try this in my class? Even if you don't see a problem, something occurs. Like you know, that is your dream. This is how new methods or more new activities are designed, created, and new paradigm, new way of thinking. Stuff. But that's the difference between analytical and creative people. Sometimes, we, but creative people also need to be analytical. Only when we are analytical. Critical and creative, as a, a reflective, we can be like you know, just creativity. Uh, it can lead to creativity, but uh, many cease to be creative. Okay, that uh, Ken Robinson says, schools kill creativity. All children are born creative, like you know, are creative. They have curiosity. They ask questions. The moment they go to school, they are silenced. They are not allowed to ask questions. They are not allowed to think. They are not allowed to do things on their own because the textbook. They have to follow the textbook. They have to follow the tutor. They have to follow what the authorities say. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. How is creativity defined? Each one has a different definition, but this particular one by Ken Robinson is authority on creativity. I've read numerous workshops. Across the globe, and he says, "I define creativity as the process of having original ideas that have value. You need to be original, and the ideas that you have should uh, should be useful to the society and should have value." Okay, that's a wonderful definition. Like I define creativity as the process of having original ideas that have value. Sometimes we come up with some new ideas, and if the ideas are not useful to our own students or to the society at large, then they are useless. Uh, like you know, just another definition by Mary Lou Cook. She says, like creativity is inventing, it's just to invent something new, experimenting, just inventing. It doesn't stop there. We move on to the next one that we experiment, then we grow, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. This particular definition is very useful for teachers. Like you know, just uh, we don't allow students to invent. We don't allow students to experiment because we just uh, always like you know protect them. We don't encourage them to take risks. If Our students break rules. We consider it as sin. Okay, we don't allow them to make mistakes. Any learner has to make mistakes, break rules, take risks, and as teachers, we also have to do it, and having fun. So all this, like you know, inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, and having fun. This is how another person defines creativity. 
Oh, this is my famous, uh, like in just a favorite quote. Imagination was like you know, is more important than knowledge. In our education system, imagination is never focused on, like you know, just a given importance. We focus on knowledge because we just want students to score marks. And Albert Einstein says, imagination is more important than knowledge. And knowledge is limited, whereas imagination encircles the world. Okay, so imagination is important. How many of us give importance to imagination? That's why, like, you know, there's uh, Ken Robinson says, school skill creativity. If you ask children who haven't gone to the school to imagine and narrate a story, and they come up with some new ideas, okay, that have so some of those stories have become science, science fictions because they just say I want uh, a child if you ask the child he says like uh, he wants to fly he wants to reach a place in 15 minutes or like you know just to use some uh, lot of imagination but somehow we don't value that imagination but that is the first step for creativity <laughs> This is like, you know, you can't be conscious of your creative uh, abilities and still be stranded in you. The moment you realize that you have creative potential, creative abilities, and you cannot be stranded in life, you know, you start knowing your worth. Like you start doing things differently that is useful to uh, your class and the society, like it is just a society at large. So, the problem is, many of us haven't realized our own creative abilities and creative potential. The need for realizing the creative potential and creative abilities is now. We need to focus on that. Uh, again, coming back to Ken Robinson, he says, creativity is now as important as in education as literacy. All along, we have been focusing on literacy and numeracy. No way, like, you know, except in few countries like uh, uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, Finland, they give importance to creativity. And they started schooling even in Finland at the age of seven. And before starting, like, you know, literacy and numeracy, they make students think creatively. This is my own definition, like just like, you know, going off the track in order to be on the track. Going off the track means violating rules, breaking rules and taking risks. And in order to be on the track, what we do should be meaningful and it should be useful. It should be useful, meaningful, relevant and interesting. This is my own definition of uh, creativity. And many of us are scared of going off the track because we think going off the track means violating the rules and it is not good and we make mistakes we in order to like you know just making mistakes is something uh, uh, good like you know, there's, that's why they say don't be scared of uh, uh, being branded right or wrong uh, now let's like you know just uh, some people say these are myths I don't know uh, you are born with creativity uh, you can just interact anyone just uh, do you think the first one is a myth? Like I've already said, like, you know, creativity. People are, some people are born with creativity. Is it true? Okay, uh, just the second one, you have to be right brain. Only the right brain people are creative. And left brain, okay, that's a, a concept like, like left brain uh, people are logical, right brain people are creative. Okay, uh, but these theories are being questioned now. It falls into your lap. Okay, you think, and then just all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you get a new idea. So you've got to be a little mad. Uh, people, creative people, love you know, they don't give importance to their uh, appearance, their behavior looks like they we consider them bad. Uh, but all these four myths are being questioned now. Okay, so. Creative dot. Everyone is born with a like creative, uh, uh, born with creativity. Creativity can be developed. Can uh, it can be learned.
creativity in teaching activities, you know, asking reflective and creative questions. All the time, school for this will continue. Okay, uh, asking reflective questions. This is what, like, you know, as teachers, I've been asking myself this question: How is a particular activity normally done? You teach listening skills, speaking skills, reading, and writing skills. You teach the vocabulary. You teach grammar. There are many different activities. How is a particular activity normally done? Because you have been, in, you are influenced by your own teachers. Your teachers say this is how some, like you know, just uh, your teachers taught you grammar using Renan Marchit grammar book. That was like a mechanical exercise. The context is not there, and uh, fortunately, you are able to speak good English now, and you are able to write without. The, uh, grammatical errors, uh, your language is impeccable, fine. But you have been like, you know, if you are influenced by your teacher, the same way you teach your students also. But that evolves, like, you know, we start realizing our own creative potential, creative ability. Then you are, we are asking this question, how am I going to do it different? If you have started asking this question, how am I going to do it differently? Then you have already started your journey of being creative. And the third one, why am I going to do it differently? That gives you the reason. Not for the sake of okay, being creative, not for the sake of being creative. It should be there should be a reason for doing it. Why am I going to do it differently? Will it help students learn something better? Okay, already there is an activity, like, you know, just if you teach that particular activity in the uh, normal way, what are, how others do it, our students can learn, but you want your students to learn it, uh, learn it better, and then, like, you know, differently, uh, learning should take place, they should find it interesting, and then you need to change the way you teach. That's how am I going to do it differently, and why am I going to do it differently? Will it help students learn something better? These four questions, like you know, they need to constantly ask and then come with some new ideas and new activities. Uh, teaching vocabulary creatively, like you know, just uh, uh, there are many ways of uh, teaching vocabulary. The one is like you know, give an interesting anecdote. The other day, I just posted an interesting anecdote of about. The Sylvester Stallman and uh, Susai, or uh, just the uh, head, the chapter head, also responded to that. He says, like, you know, he created a word grid, like word search, and he said he's going to teach uh, past tense, like a verb in the past form. And you can, the students will be able uh, just uh, find the words in the word grid, and he will start doing it. Another teacher, very creatively, she says, like, you know, she will show uh, something about like you know, the silver style is the movie or a video clip and through that she will teach vocabulary many have given interesting suggestions so here just uh, one instance like you know give them an interesting anecdote ask them to guess the meanings of some unfamiliar words based on context that's what we do even the other day uh, professor Vincent explained like you know how to guess the meaning in context Check whether they have guessed the meaning correctly by asking questions. This is what we normally do that. But here, uh, another one, choosing vocabulary creative, choose an interesting uh, story or it remove some familiar words from the text, ask students to use appropriate words in the blanks. Check their answers, at times multiple answers are possible. Teachers always go by just one answer. But there are multiple answers possible. This is how to, the other day we were just uh, taking a session for Afghanistan teachers. And it was uh, Mr. Susai who conducted the session. He talked about creativity. And one of the teachers asked the question, like, you know, how to make students creative? Okay. So uh, sometimes, like, you know, we say, like, one answer is possible. We say we just ask them to brainstorm and allow them to think differently and come with a different solution. The same way, different answer. Let's take this particular passage. Can anyone just like, you know, a crow finds a piece of cheese 
and retires to buy Dash to aid it. The fox, wanting it for himself, dashed the crow, calling it beautiful and wondering, wondering whether its voice is Dash. When it lets out a call, the cheese Dash and is devoured by the fox. Can anyone just give me the four words? It takes about just in 30 seconds. Multiple answers are possible. Not just one particular word. Blank number one. You all know the story. You all know the story. But only thing is here. Yeah. You have read it in Tamil or just in some other languages. Tree, sir. <laughs> A tree, okay. Any other answer possible? Branch. And a branch. Tree, branch, bed. Nest. Yeah. Nest, nest, wall. Yeah, nest, yeah. wall, people are just. To a rock. Okay, uh, just let's take three answers. Tree, branch, wall. Nest, okay. rock. Yeah. Okay, which one is more appropriate? Three. Three. Three? Okay, I would say like, you know, even three, branch uh, is more appropriate, like even uh, it right, retires to your nest. Okay, fine. Uh, retires to your wall. Oh, it may not sound, it, uh, collocation wise, it doesn't sound properly. Okay, fine. Okay, let's go on to the second blank there. The fox, wanting it for himself, dashed the crow. From the crow. Huh? From the crow. The fox dashed the crow. How do the crow? It's a verb Ad for? Addressed. Addressed? Yeah. yeah. Uh, somebody has given... The next one, calling it... Flatters. Flatters. Gentiles. Flatters? Flatters, sir. Okay, flatters, then? Gentiles. Gentiles, okay. Then somebody says cheats. Cheats. Please read what follows next. Condenses. Watching it for himself, dash the pro, calling it beautiful, and wondering whether its voice is. Okay, uh. Someone said flatters, entices. Okay, it's all in present because it's a grammar. Also, we can check. Uh, that's fine. Any again, different answers, phrases, different answers are possible. The third blank. Third one. Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Uh, any other word? The voice is sweet. Your voice is any other melodious. Somebody melodious. 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 Okay. Pleasant. Your voice is innocent. Just pleasant. Pleasant. Okay. Okay. Oh, fine. Next one. When it lets out the cough, the cheese falls. Cheese falls down. Okay, just the one word, false. Okay, fine. Any other word? Drops. Uh, okay, drops. Uh. Okay, fine. The same exercise I had given, uh, just tried with uh, some primary school students. Okay, it's, uh, it's a very good, like, you know, just uh, the students are from different, uh, it's a CBC school, in fact, like, you know, just a uh, class two students. Uh, the same exercise I tried for the first plan. They gave it some uh, twenty different words. Twenty different words. Uh, some of the words uh, weren't appropriate, like tree, branch, wall, nest. As you have said, they had given a few more words also. And for each plan, they had uh, just uh, each student had different uh, given different words, and they sounded meaningful. 
what is the process called? The whole process, like you know, we have just uh, spent about uh, three to four minutes on that. Why is this exercise important? This activity important? Not just learning words. Why is it important? Other than learning words, what happens to the children? Like when they are given this type of exercise, kindling the imagination. Yeah, we kindle their imagination. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As if the story is uh, involving animals, it could be easily attracted. Okay, uh, we it's about uh, animals, and then they just we involve the children also, like you know, they find it interesting. As the first other person said, like we kindle their imagination, we make them think, we make them think, then we provide uh, the words, like you know, this is uh, like you know. It finds a piece of cheese and retires to a branch, branch to eat it. Fox, wanting it for himself, flatters the crow, praises the crow, and many different words are possible. Many words are possible. Uh, if you are really a creative teacher, you will allow uh, as many words as possible, and then just to say, like you know, just to explain the words. Uh, they're calling it beautiful and wondering whether its voice is sweet. When it lets okay, the cheese falls, and it's okay, fine. Uh, next. We teach grammar, you know, just uh, teach. It, uh, do we teach grammar creatively? Like, you know, just uh, sometimes what happens in many schools is like, you know, we we tell students about the language, not how to use the language. That's why we are just uh, obsessed with the grammatical terms, nouns, pronouns. I uh, just uh, came across a question paper uh, one of the top schools in Chennai. Uh, there, the students were asked to define adjectives. Define the word adjective. Uh, I was wondering, like, what? Why should they just okay? We test their knowledge of uh, grammatical terms. Fine. Uh, I don't know. Like, there are many professors who are proficient in English. They write, you know, they speak it, but like their pronunciation is uh, their accent, like the word to use, write uh, beautiful English. But if you ask them to define adjective or adverb, I don't know how they will. Uh, Dr. Ilago often says that even he doesn't know how to define certain grammatical terms. Okay, fine. That is a. Uh, 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 but uh, we just bombard our students with uh, grammatical terms. How do we teach even the modal words I'm using is like teaching models using horoscope. Okay, I just sent a lesson plan. That was like you know, this the Trinity College UK published that one, which I won the compet lesson comp like competition. Uh, they're using the horoscope how we can teach modal words, but uh, in a very interesting way, asking students write horoscope for others based on some modal words. Like take this one. Are you able to read it? Here is the horoscope for different persons. Classify the horoscopes into categories. Like you know, normally, I don't believe in it. But out of curiosity, I read. Uh, we recently, know, just some time back, conducted a survey, and uh, 80 out of uh, 90 teachers have the habit of reading horoscopes. And out of 80, only 20 teachers believe to be true. Okay, so this is one of the horoscopes. Like you know, you will visit your close relative this week. Enjoy life in a place you like the most. The company of your cousins will revive your spirits. One of your uh, relatives might present you a new computer or PlayStation. You will have a very successful week. You will be on top of the world. You will show interest in music and buy some music. When you might get sick, you should avoid taking non-vegetarian food. This is given like a funny one written by a student in one of the, written by a teacher in one of the workshops. Okay, so. Let's take another one. Okay, this is a, just a read a conversation between Bingo and Bingo. I have given it in the lesson plan. After reading a horoscope, I just uh, divided uh, teachers into like into pair, like just asked them. Uh, we demonstrated it, uh, the same with some students also, and they were very uh, like you know, creatively used. Uh, modal verbs, even before we teach them what it is, like you know, 
he says like i heard that you are good at making predictions why don't you predict my okay your date of birth 22nd november or oh, you are a scorpio this week you will be very happy you will make new friends you will spend much time chatting with your friends online you will get okay you may accompany your friends to your cinema you may buy a new playstation you will get first mark in one of your favorite subjects they are using modal verbs there okay in a very creative way is it going to be a bright week yes it's going to be a bright week you should also be careful advice one of your friends may take advantage of your generosity and make you spend your money on parties you should be cautious you may meet with an accident here they are using different modal verbs and how <coughs> like you know this is the uh, i take a slide from wait this the uh, english study page when we teach this like can be this may must shall and some of the students don't learn it properly like you know, we need to tell them with proper good examples the examples should be based on the context if you are a creative teacher if you are a creative teacher you will come with this new interesting examples not the same one which were given by your own teachers or you find in textbooks only then like you know just according to a research uh, if the examples are from the classroom from the classroom like you know based on student experiences student tend to remember and really the learning takes place okay this is how you can do it like you can divide students into groups five to six members give each student a sample horoscope which you find in newspapers magazines it could be even in a different language and then our later the students uh, can just uh, translate it to english ask students to identify modal words in the horoscope if it is in english ask them to discuss their horoscope with their group members uh, we just use them to help uh, develop their speaking skills then ask them to write a funny horoscope for any of their friends then students uh, will use all these modal verbs we can just uh, uh, discuss it in the class later this is one interesting activity which i have done many times and almost like when just every time the students learn something new and they find the exercises interesting and i have uh, uh, clearly explained it in the lesson plan which i posted in the whatsapp group you can just refer to it even after the session is over you can just have a look at it this is another way of like you know that's uh, these days almost all our students are on uh, social media some of them are like you know the social media can be used for creative purposes constructive purposes using social media creatively by posting interesting messages created by you instead of sharing something you create your own message and commenting on someone's post that really helps you become more creative modifying a text to suit your students level of comprehension that's another way of doing it you come across numerous uh, news stories anecdotes is there in whatsapp like you know some interesting anecdotes you read but you need to instead of sharing it as it is we want to use it in the classroom what you have to do is you need to modify that text uh the other day professor wilson talked about grade and reading not the same reading passage can be given to all students most of our students in government schools find it difficult to read they don't know how to read first of all that's what he said they don't know how to read we need to teach them how to read and the text should be graded that is if you are really a creative teacher you will just grade the text like you just simplify it or modify it based on your students level using an authentic text in the list authentic text the text is like you are taking it and simply just a certain words you can change it when creating modifying adapting a new language activity uh in fact i just wanted to just post a language activity and want the students and teachers to modify it uh but i have given them so much input uh maybe if the whatsapp group continues like you know just a uh, uh, even after this uh, webinar is over we will just uh, i'll say uh, post it there in the group and next one the most important thing is you need to make your students think that's 
what I said, like, you know, this, again, repeating uh, what Ken Robinson said, schools kill creativity because teachers don't allow students to think. Fortunately, these days, fortunately, these days, we have incorporated, many textbooks have incorporated critical thinking also in the, uh, as uh, activities, helping students to think creatively and critically. Okay, that should make your students think and you will like, you know, uh, they will come with some, come up with some new ideas. And when we allow them to think creatively and critically, their uh, thinking skills develop and they become more creative. Yesterday, just, uh, I just posted it on WhatsApp, like, it was just uh, uh, new ideas and new words, saying things differently. And someone commented on it. Uh, I don't know the person is attending the dinner today. And he said, me, Sir, I saw your post uh, on Facebook. And I said, Why do you like it? He says, I just asked the person, Why do you like it? And the person says, no, Sir, it's a simple idea, but you have used new words. And I thought, like, Let me include it. Uh, what actually is really like, don't argue with people. That's what I wanted to say. But if I say it differently, when discussions turn into arguments and arguments turn into battle of words, use silence as your weapon to win such battles. So weapon, battle and like battle of words, few, one simple idea but you put it differently. Uh, I remember having conducted a workshop seven years ago, just asking students to write one line, one line. And that was the first time, like, you know, just, uh, I uh, didn't have much, a lot of uh, ideas, but I just told them, gave them some one-liners, and uh, the students came with some new creative ideas, as the words they use, they're very off. Uh, this is another, like, you know, as teachers, you can do it. Okay, this is like, you know, just a... Uh, English language teachers creativity quotient, how to assess their creativity. Uh, I posted it on the group. Uh, uh, Mr. Susay, how many minutes I can take, right? How many more minutes can I take? Yeah, yeah no problem. Go ahead. I'll try to finish it at 5.10 and then question and answer? Yes, no, sir. No problem. Yeah, go ahead. No problem. So, this is a tool that I designed to assess creative uh, teachers creativity I strongly believe that all teachers are creative and teachers can develop their creativity by just realizing their potential and working on it. Okay, so the 30 statements in the tool uh, which was published in 2014 like as part of a research paper in humanizing language teaching in the UK. Uh, the paper also I sent you, not a paper, the full paper, but a uh, uh, tool I sent, I have sent you and some of you have already attempted it. Uh, this is based on like, you know, how I did it, like, you know, I just interviewed or sent a survey questionnaire to some about uh, 200 teachers and they responded like, just like what I did earlier, what is creativity, how, who is a creative English language teacher like these questions and based on that I have just designed uh, this too. Uh, like as a language teacher you should have a strong passion for teaching English. Only if you have passion for teaching English then you can become a creative teacher. If you are not passionate about English language teaching and you will be an ordinary teacher not an extraordinary teacher. And your way of teaching English will be different and unique. Like I've already said that, like, you know, just uh, uh, creativity, when we define creativity, it's a different thinking and different doing things differently and uh, thinking differently and doing things differently. And uniqueness is very important. And uh, the thing is also, I always believe that communicative competence is more important than grammatical competence. If you are a creative teacher, you will allow students to make mistakes. You will not point out their errors. Rather, you will give importance to communication. Communication. Uh, uh, that's the paradigm shift we all need to undergo. We are obsessed with the grammar. And uh, this somehow kills students' creativity and our own our creativity also. I enjoy trying out new ideas while preparing lesson plans. Okay, just uh, 
go home and create like you prepare a lesson plan and check whether your lesson plan is different and you must enjoy doing it the times you know just when i get time even if i have to do some priorities are there i have to do something else and uh, if i find it interesting i spend time uh, one interesting thing that i do like you know just uh, i enjoy creating uh, crossword puzzles it takes much time but i enjoy doing it and uh, i have uh, created so many puzzles but i haven't used any of them like you know but really i enjoy doing it then i tolerate my students students language errors in writing which is it's like already uh, because ideas are more important ideas are more important than these grammatical errors and other things at any time a person can correct uh, their grammatical errors but celebrate ideas the moment we start celebrating ideas our students will enjoy classes and then we also will give it more to them creative teacher i have a sense of humor and can make my students laugh out loud okay but not all creative teachers or uh, have that sense of humor but it's uh, like uh, when you start narrating jokes anecdotes uh, you can just display a uh, sense of humor that way Uh, I don't fully uh, just uh, depend on prescribed test books or workbook. This is uh, even the other day, Professor Vincent Sauter said, "Throw away your textbook if you find certain texts not useful to the students." Okay, fine. You just adapt existing materials or use your own materials in the class and create exercises. This is very important, very much important for all teachers. Like you know, we need to learn, like to use the available resources. My students find the materials interesting and useful. Like this is how. When I send a question paper, I don't copy questions from any previous set papers. This is again when you are asked to send a question paper. How creative are you? Are you going to take examples from other question papers or other books, or you are going to create your own? I show interest in preparing teaching and learning resources. Okay, fine. Enjoy reading creative pieces of literature. This is all creative people, you know, just uh, because. they look for something interesting create it okay they enjoy uh, reading creative pieces of literature their interpretation of literature or any piece of literature is different from others interpretation uh, this is how like you know, if you are given a poem to teach do you just depend on notes like someone like uh, the same interpretation in a class of 50 a poem can be inter- poem can be interpreted in 50 ways allow students to give their own interpretation you interpret it uh, differently this is how you look at like you know uh, you need to look at it i'm going for out of box of thinking that way how it's been enjoy learning new things integrating technology in teaching etc creative people like you know, just learn new things they just uh, don't depend on others they take risks and learn i have seen so many uh, like a senior citizen the teachers who are about 60 and 65 they learn new things now especially after the uh, like you know during the covid they have learned to use technology and it is like you know just the desire to learn new things make them uh, makes them more creative i always or quite often try new activities in the classroom if i passionate about my professional development is creative people like just like you know just uh, some of this particular statement like you know creative people don't give much importance to their professional health but uh, uh, that's also very important uh, have a great deal of curiosity about syllabus teaching testing is uh, just uh, you have must have gone through this part i just uh, skip that part uh, coming to the this one oh, the 90 idea uh, uh, a creative teacher doesn't use others ideas as their own They need to be original. They need to be unique. They are original. They they take an original idea, they adapt it to their students. That they can do. So people who know me well consider me a bizarre type of person. Like you know, if you are creative, they will definitely say many things about you. Like you know, you are you think differently. When you think differently, you will be considered bizarre. So not that for me. I can just have a look at you. The final, like the twenty-third statement, is where you are learners set the teacher. If you are creative. and you love uh, you are your focus is on learning so learning centered you are uh, learning centered or learner centered teacher and you need to be a reflective teacher 
and that helps you become a better teacher. Okay. The last tip, uh, all the good in like it. The 27th statement, you consider your learners a great resource. Even if you don't have a textbook or a workbook or any material, you consider your learners a great source and uh, have a learn how uh, teach something differently than they. So you know, if you are really creative, you can do that. Okay, you can sustain your students' interest in the class. Uh, creative people also love solving problems. The so problem solving contexts and they engage students in the problem solving activities. And the final one is critically evaluate your ideas, preparation, teaching, etc., testing, etc. Okay, the critical thinking and creative thinking and critical thinking should go together. Then, if these two go together, then you uh, become really a reflective teacher. A reflective teacher can become a creative teacher. Uh, this book you can freely download from the internet. This is the uh, British Council. Creativity in the English Language Classroom. It was uh, it is edited by Alan Bailey and Nick Pichy. I have interviewed both of them. These articles are also available on the internet. You can download it. So this is uh, like you know, there are many teachers share their experience of being creative, what they have done in the classroom, and why creativity is important. That's what they discuss in the book. It can be freely downloaded. You just Google creativity in the English classroom by Alan Daly and Nick Pichet and we can download it. This is my last word, like be curious. Like curiosity, like you know, just children are curious. As we grow old, we cease to be curious. But we should continue to be curious. Curiosity makes us more creative. Okay, enjoy being different. Okay. Just uh, don't uh, always, you know, go off the track, but in order to be on the track, spread your wings of imagination. Spend time, you know, like, you know, just to your free time, like, imagine. Spend 15 to 20 minutes every day. Imagine about, like, you know, just uh, life after COVID, how is it going to be? Uh, you must have read uh, an article, like, you know, about by Dr. Kilambo in the Kindle recently, about a month ago. He just described the COVID-19 post-COVID-19 situation, how students will come to the class and how teachers, uh, teachers need to be creative. Okay, that's what he discusses in that article. And experiment new things. We are scared of experimenting new things because our system, our education system doesn't allow us to experiment new things. Because we need to prepare students for exams. We are marks, we have just the marks oriented and exam oriented system. So we don't allow the experiment, we, uh, we don't uh, experiment new things. Please experiment new things. Even government school teachers can do that. Yesterday, a uh, teacher from a government school or uh, I don't know, uh, private school, he sent me a query. Is it possible? Can we do something new in our classroom? Because our system doesn't permit. No, it is always possible. If you are creative, you can do it. And adapt anything that suits you. Sometimes you don't get the original, like, you know, uh, we need not be original, but we should be able to adapt. That's what says. Like even if you find a textbook, a uh, text, authentic text, you can just uh, adapt it according to the needs. Always be guided by the word fresh. What you do should it should look fresh. Finally, go off the track, the seventh one, in order to be on the track. Now it's time for questions because it's already 5.15. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Sorry, Susan. Sir? Yes, sir. Are there any questions? Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll let it be up. Because uh, I don't think Google keeps this limited, so we can, ex I mean, uh, uh, go for 5 to 10 minutes extra, no problem. Sir. So they yeah. ask uh, the participants to raise uh, uh, things if at all we have. You can unmute yourself and then ask the question. Sir? Yeah, please introduce yourself. Saraswati Prabhakar from Chennai, sir. Yeah, just Saraswati, please. Yeah. How can we motivate and assess or evaluate creativity in an integrated classroom condition? 
see uh, like you know just uh, is it important to assist students creativity that's a question arises you like you know, how we can just assist students creativity students or create you know, for example in a group discussion you ask them to narrate a story you ask them to narrate a story normally what english language teachers do is we assess their communicative ability whether the student is able to speak english well the pronunciation is good use appropriate vocabulary whether the student is uh, uh, fluent enough the coherent this is what we see somehow we don't give importance to creativity creativity okay so here like you know some uh, give a problem for example a problem in uh, business management uh, schools what they do they give a case study and they ask them to analyze it some creative people come with a new solution like you know, creative solution creative solution otherwise some uh, like you know analyze and give a solution but that is not very creative one it think like you know just give them problem problems they today brainy problem ask students to discuss it groups let them come with some creative ideas okay celebrate the ideas like you know even if they are not going to be very useful to the society like you know just encourage them this is one way of uh, encouraging them to think creatively make them think make them think that's a brainstorming is a wonderful activity any uh, that's why just we ask students uh, uh, we have that brainstorming activity before we start any lesson that helps them learn the lesson better so this is one way of like you know they through these activities we can assess their creativity unfortunately we don't have give marks for creativity in our system education system if it is changed it will be great like in the over like in the score finally we pro the progress card there for creativity if we give marks that will be good even like you know just uh, we have professor ilango professor vincent they can also answer the question it's not just one person okay so i am a resource person for today's session they are also they can also ask sir i actually asked for the in integrated classroom where the students are of uh, having different uh, disabilities sir so oh, different disabilities ah yes sir integrated classroom means the same isn't it when the students have different disabilities in such a classroom how to Oh, I don't actually get the question. Like in the disability, what do you mean by that? In a class of forty students, some students are also like no. The whole of the students are not that kind of disability. They don't have it. But nowadays, what is the government's plan is should be integrated in the same classroom if they are blind. Even if they are dumb and deaf, and all, they have to be seen. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, During that time, how can we create this? Sorry, I have no answer to that because I'm not an expert in that particular field. Okay, I haven't thought of it. If anybody answers the can answer the question, I'll be very grateful to them. Like, uh, that's right. That's right. Yes. No, uh, as uh, uh, the young person has said, now the class is being integrated. Um, okay. This uh, yes, uh, children with disabilities, yes, such right. as dyslexia, or yes. even, uh, even vision. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, right, sir. Let's uh, 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 here, instead of uh, making these children creative, the teacher has to create. She has to devise various uh, ways of uh, approaching each one of these sets of students. So. Uh, the challenge is not to make them creative first of all but for the teacher so the teacher has to uh, yeah please thank you professor vincent thank you sir. thank you thank you sir hello uh, yeah please hello hello sir i am ashok upadhyay yes sir uh, i am a secondary school teacher sir okay sir uh, generally i observe and i also deal with the, actually we all teachers have a fixed mindset of rules of grammar okay. uh, rules of uses how whenever we teach our uh, classes in the grammar i also personally feel sir 
दिस रूल्स यानी दीज रूल्स ऑल्सो इनहेंस रोट लर्निंग ऑफ रूल्स इवन बाई पर्सनल चिल्ड्रन ऑल्सो ऑलवेज रोट लर्निंग एंड I try. I always find that a lot of errors, or uh, you know, students are making. So after independence, many years have been passed in India. English is also being considered as a second, second language, even a foreign language. Sir, uh, I want to ask you, sir, how can we deal uh, this pro this problem across out of the box, sir? Yes, sir. See, uh, just uh, as English language teachers, we are obsessed with the grammar rules and accuracy. Yes, absolutely. Okay. The purpose is to communicate. If a student is able to communicate his message and we are able to understand it as intended by the speaker, then it's okay. I can only. Why should we just like uh, uh, if I ask the question, which is more important, accuracy or fluency? Uh, actually, fluency is more important than accuracy. When we speak in our mother tongue, your mother tongue Hindi or Malayalam. What's your mother tongue, sir? Ashok. Hindi, sir. Hindi, Hindi. Hindi. Okay. Uh, my mother tongue is Tamil, but when I speak in Tamil, I take a lot of grammatical errors. It's not always correct. When I, but message is understood by uh, my friends or my family who listen to me, who hear my words. Okay. So. Allow them to speak. You can correct the grammatical errors later. Okay. Mm. That is what we should encourage them. First of all, that's why I say like we need to undergo a paradigm shift. We should yes. continue with the concept like accuracy, fluency, or communication is more important than accuracy. If you want to become a, for example, a student wants to become a journalist, you should write yes. grammatically correct sentence. That's a different thing. But social communication, uh, grammar is not that important. Even if they make mistake, or like you know, even uh, uh, we have TV debates. There are many speakers who make grammatical mistake. We don't count the number of mistakes they make. We just uh, uh, for us, idea is important. That's what we need to encourage in the classroom also. But, uh, some teachers stop students if they make a mistake. They ask them to give a speech. If a student says, "I go to church every Sunday," stop, stop, stop. I go to church. Then please don't allow them to develop their communicative skills, like communication skills. Communicative competence is more important than grammatical competence. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, sir, this is Rashmi. Rashmi, uh, yes, uh, Rashmi. Yeah, I have I had uh, posted my question in the chat box too, but uh, uh, actually, what I struggle with is uh, how can we bring in this creativity in uh, in an MCQ form? Like uh, if we are using an uh, we are giving an artistry to the students. So, is it possible to bring in creativity in MCQs? Like as per the guidelines, we have to make. MCQs for RTC these days. So how can? Okay, you just give a statement and give four possible answers, four possible answers, and include one or two creative answer also there. Okay, that will be all right. And the student can choose the answer. Uh, okay, for example, that uh, the story that I have given, the four blanks. Many different answers are possible. Many different answers are possible. The same. Story can be converted into uh, MCQ, multiple choice questions for each plan, four different answers. Okay, so this is one way of testing their theory. Like you can use the hot potato. Somebody has mentioned in their uh, uh, responses, they use hot potato to create exercises. Okay, using hot potato, you can just create multiple choice questions and close uh, exercises also. I have always found that, like you know, just to close exercises, you remove certain words and create blanks and give multiple uh, words as solution, and let the student find the correct answer. That's that's possible. That's possible. Technology also helps you. There is a software, freeware. This hot potato you download it. You can use hot potato to create different types of exercises. 
So, hot potato mm-hmm. is an app or what? I didn't get you. It is software. Okay, it was uh, developed by Canadians in the University of Canada. Okay, it uh, it has all the features. You just Google hot potato software. You can download it. You can create uh, different varieties, uh, like uh, different types of exercises. Match the following close exercises. Uh, there are six different uh, types, and you can use multiple choice questions also. And interactive, it's quite interactive. Immediately, the student gets the correct answer mark, and you can give feedback also. Yours is a clear. Oh, what a creative answer! Congratulations. You can give feedback also. Hot potato. ஒன்பதுல <laughs> 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 That is, they are all the inferential comprehension process. Infer, when you infer, you are thinking and creativity come there. And of course, the critical comprehension about which I have not said much, um, there is a need for analysis, for intuitively, from the point of view of it. And uh, one more point about uh, grammar, uh, I am against teaching grammar, but if you necessarily want to teach grammar, use a number of games, inventively and creatively. to teach some grammar aspects. For example, this is a type of game to teach uh, the uh, present continuous tense. I will say, I will show this and I ask, what am I doing? And the uh, student here will answer, you are stretching your head, if it is possible. Or I can even be very simple, uh, reading. What am I doing? You are reading. And the other, the other person will show something else and say, what am I doing? Like that goes on. So grammar can be easily taught. Tenses can be easily taught, or even direct to direct form can be easily taught through games. If you want to teach grammar, thank you. I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nothing. The level is there. You can just ask the question. Grammar. I thought I had one last word. The last word I got. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. Everyone. Uh, this is the. This is my question to Professor Alba. Uh, most of the time we think about creativity and everybody is wishing to have creativity in our classrooms the only obstacle is our evaluation and assessment that will not allow us because most of the time teachers are ready to have their own creativity in their learning and teaching process but uh, our assessment and evaluation uh, can we in the nep at least is there any opportunity for teachers to go with creativity and uh, how can we bring this creativity that can be assessed as professor said if there is a marks for creativity certainly people will go ahead with this what do you say what to say so actually like you know just the creativity can be assessed like when you set a question paper for example the question itself is creative today we have like an online test uh, a particular university is uh, selecting candidates for the phd candidates uh, they were asked to write candidates were asked to write an essay and we were discussing it i was discussing it with my wife and they like you know just uh, uh, my wife said like a uh, essay topic is given students can google and find the answer right why they so if it is a creative question Uh, like you have given a phd proposal like i'm just giving that uh, that context you okay why do you, do you think your phd research will be useful to the society In what way will it be useful uh, then you need to write within 20 minutes or 30 minutes to write an essay on that it takes to think you cannot just uh, copy from the internet. that's all open book open book exams are like that so we you ask questions Okay, I just came across one question in the paper, like teaching uh, uh, direct into indirect, or you know, active into passive. I drank coffee yesterday. The students were asked to change it into passive. 
coffee was drunk by me yesterday, that's the correct answer. But nobody speaks English like that. Does anyone say like coffee was drunk by me yesterday, uh, Italy was eaten by my wife two days ago? No, nobody speaks English like that. So why unnecessarily should we use passive? So the way we ask questions, happy, I give a creative. This is creative way of assessing students' language That is what. Yeah, thank you sir. So because most of the time in question paper we can expect this question like write an essay in during the examination. Essay writing is not an easy task and like highly higher order of writing uh, skill. But uh, in examination most of the time... What actually do we test? We do we test the students language skills or yeah. essay writing, uh, writing skills like you know that uh, Sixth standard student also is asked to, class six student is also asked to write an essay on patriotism. Class 12 student is also asked to write an essay on patriotism. I don't think like, oh, it's a, it should be. As if for reading, we have graded reading. The topic given to the students also should be like, if it's a higher, we're testing the higher order thinking skills, we can give them something uh, to test their create uh, critical thinking. Okay. So what type of questions we give our students, that's the thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There makes the difference. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, as the running short time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Ilanga, sir. And we yeah. have from yeah. yeah. Yes. Sir. Sure. Um, thank you, Susan. Couple of minutes. Let me start off uh, congratulating um, Dr. Albert, my friend, on making a very expressive presentation. He started off with a certain amount of theoretical input on what creativity is, and the later part of his presentation, he went on to illustrate that. So he, in a way, tamed creativity because some of us feel that creativity is something which is unteachable. Okay, he made creativity realizable, implementable, and teachable. Thanks, Albert, for that. Thank you. Sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, you quoted many people to define uh, creativity, but I liked your own quote. You mentioned that going off the track in order to be on the track. I would say that why do you want to come back on the track? You know, keep going off the track. <laughs> the moment you come back on the track, you are becoming repetitive. You are becoming cliché. To me, a creative teacher is one whose classes, every class that he conducts is different from the other classes. Supposedly, a teacher meets students and have students for about 180 times. His all the 180 classes should be different. Okay. Only then, there is certain element of interest, certain element of suspense for the student. That's how we can nurture creativity among the students. And the creativity, quite interestingly, uh, is something, I mean, you as a teacher, nobody would ask you to be creative. You need to force yourself to be creative. You need to create a kind of cognitive crisis, a kind of intellectual crisis in you. You know, let's not bother about the assessment and testing, too much of it. I don't think that everything that we do in the classroom has to be assessed, has to be tested. You as a creative teacher, it's your responsibility to make your students creative. They are dead wood. If the teacher is a dead wood, you would create only dead woods. You can't make students create you. That's very good. I mean, only when you have a passion, I mean, I can quote a number of words that, uh, you know, Albert was using and he was mentioning about think differently, do things differently. I mean, there are a number of interesting expressions uh, to define what creativity is. So I would just say that instead of going on what he mentioned, instead of reinforcing whatever he said, I would just say that teachers have to be creative. If you want to be uh, impressive, if you want to create a better global citizens, because we are no longer thinking in terms of uh, you know, students in Tamil Nadu, students in India, because we are moving towards a different kind of uh, uh, world. And if you want to create a global citizen, I don't think that we need to confine ourselves with a textbook, with the items that are mentioned in the uh, in the in the textbook, because uh, this kind of a uniformity kills creativity. You need to go off the boundaries. You need to go beyond the boundaries. You need to push your frontiers. Only then you can be creative. The point I'm trying to make here is it's the responsibility of every teacher to be creative. Your system will not ask you to be creative. Okay, your headmaster will not ask you to be creative. Principal will not ask you to be creative. But you need to become creative. You need to have a kind of urge within you. You need to create a crisis for yourself. You need to tell your. You need to ask yourself what is that I'm going to give new to my student. That newness is extremely important. Only then you can be a, a creative teacher. Uh, well, let me end with that saying that uh, 
you need to be different. And if you want to make a mark in your life as a creative teacher, if you want your students to remember you for making them create you, do something different in your class. With the permission of uh, Suzai, that I find him one of the very enthusiastic, very dynamic chapter leaders. Of course, we have got about 50 chapters uh, in our country. Uh, I would rate him as one of the very enthusiastic chapter heads. And with this permission, I want to make quickly a couple of announcements. One, uh, webinar for students. Uh, some of you may be aware that we have been running webinars for teachers from next month onwards. In fact, we are going to have the inaugural webinar this month on 30th of uh, August. But from next month onwards, every third Sunday between 4.30 and 5.30, we are going to have webinar for students. This will be a different kind of webinar. You know, there is going to be a couple of presentations in every webinar. Uh, one would be a professional, neither necessarily be a teacher. Okay, one would be a professional, other one would be a uh, student. The, uh, the professional would give the theoretical input and the, the student would autobiographically narrate how he realized it, how he experienced it. Okay, so there is a combination of, there is a balance of these two things. Uh, and uh, the, the focus of this particular webinar is going to be life skills, students' life skills. As long as they remain as students, we need to give them certain skills. People talk about life skills or 21st century skills, several such things. And we're not confining ourselves to them, but we also need to extend them, you know, get them future ready, get them career ready, get them life ready. So we are also looking into uh, looking futuristically the kind of skills that would be required because as everybody says that in another 10 years time, not too far, in another 10 years time, 30 to 40% of the job, jobs which are in existence now are not going to be in existence. We, need, we are creating students for an uncertain world. We are creating students for the jobs which are not in existence now. Okay, supposing when you are te teaching first, uh, let's say first standard now, and you need to visualize how the world is going to be after about 12 years. Uh, similarly, when the students come to the college, okay, you need to think of how the world is going to be after four years or five years. Okay, and you need to create the students for that kind of a world. What is then you can become a creative teacher? If you are going to confine yourself to the textbook, syllabus, curriculum, and if you are going to be typically a classroom teacher, I think you are going to be a dead wood. And I don't think that we need to continue with the profession because the demands are quite different. Okay, so that's one of the things. So the last thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, this year uh, Elta is planning to celebrate Teachers Day with their difference. And we are going to have a series of competitions uh, for about three days, 3rd, 4th and 5th September. There are going to be some motivational speakers. And besides the motivational speakers, we are planning to conduct about 10 different competitions. Uh, not the usual kind of competitions like essay writing, elocution, and things like that. But we are going to have things like memes, teacher, e-posters, blogging, PPT, podcasts and things like that. It's open to the school uh, students, certain uh, events are open to the school students, certain events are for college students, certain events are for teachers as well. So I would, I would request you uh, uh, to reach out to the student and the website will be ready in another few days time and you can, uh, you can access them, ask your students to access them, no registration fee, it's open to anybody, okay, and then uh, do encourage us. We want more number of uh, students and the teachers also benefit out of the association because the prime aim of this association is professionalizing the teachers. Okay, if you have been doing what you have been doing so long, I don't think that we need to consider this profession. We need to do something different because Albert kept on emphasizing the word think differently, do things differently. That is what that is what is required in today's context. Finally, let me, uh, you know, uh, so nice to see Dr. Vincent after so many years. I had the chance to meet him virtually after about almost two decades, I would say, or at least a one decade. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's true. I think it was Karu, 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 Thank you so much, Susan. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Um, uh, I mean, for taking your content, attending this webinar. So, if you have got any uh, questions or something, you can also post your questions in the, in the WhatsApp group that we have already created. Uh, Dr. Albert would be happy to answer all, all your questions. So, since we are running uh, short of time, so I take this opportunity in thanking Dr. Albert you know, for making everyone uh, you know, creating ourselves, you know, including myself. So, you know, we have recharged our batteries. So, that thing, so I am sure, I am sure that I mean, all the participants would agree with me. So, we will definitely take uh, uh, the activities and the things I learned in this webinar and to transact in our classroom once uh, uh, later. Thank you so much sir, for having uh, thank you. your time. Yes sir. Uh, and then I also thank uh, uh, Ivanko uh, and uh, 